happy Friday and probably some of you were wondering is she going to come on or is she not going to come on and to be honest we've had such a busy morning we were kind of saying will we make it will we won't make it so this morning um our module one students had sue whale and uh, joined them here in the bloom room so sue whale and um, haven't got the books i might have some of the old books handy here she is the author of the book the treatment of flowers the cut flowers and the cut foliage so she always comes into our module one beginner students has a little chat to them about the books and then she obviously has a special deal like it's such a price for one book two books three books etc so maybe if one of our secretaries is watching there, for anybody that is interested in their books, because I definitely recommend them. And as you know, we only recommend things that we know or that we have used ourselves. So if somebody tags Sue Whale, at sign Sue Whale, S-U Whale, or somebody tags J-Go, J-A-G-O, J-Go Publishing Company. I think she's actually Sunflower Sue on Instagram. Sunflower Sue on Instagram she is, anybody that's watching there on Instagram. And we have hello from Mauritius over on TikTok. We hello. have Kai, I think it is, Hi, um, Kai. How are is you? watching in from Mauritius on TikTok. And um, yeah, we've got a few people. And um, what I actually didn't realise on TikTok from yesterday was that it, the live doesn't save. I, all right you know okay. so once we're live we're, we're live new to tiktok you know we've been using it for a while for posting videos on but yesterday was our first time to actually go live on it and then obviously today is our second time so big welcome to anybody that's joining us on instagram or on tiktok and obviously we're on instagram and facebook as well and youtube so yesterday Deirdre was shopping up in Lidl and she came across these and she said you know what show the students and the followers these because these are going to be a bargain. So up in Lidl, what Lidl did you go to? Lidl on the Green Hills Road. Right so Green Hills Road Lidl but they'll all probably have them and if anybody does go and sees this take a photograph of it post it here you know that way and let people know what little or what branch of little that you've seen it in so it's the rolls of the hessian ribbon so that's how they came with that cover on them and this was only 2.99 now i wouldn't be able to buy a wholesale you know that way for that price i wouldn't be able to get it in from china for that price it's an absolute bargain so anybody that's in the flower business Go and fill your trolley up, hop up to Little there and fill it up, 2 99 I don't know how many yards it's I think it was 20 metres, I think it says. 20 metres, yeah. So 20 metres on them rolls. Absolutely brilliant. Great for doing like your um your bows, you know, like your collar bows. So I'll just kind of scrunch this up just to kind of give you an idea. You know, for making that kind of display bow. Um, but listen, for decorating handles of wedding bouquets or covering up straw bases for making jewel wreaths on. There's loads and loads of things that you can do. I'm actually going to go up and get a few more rolls, I yeah, think. So yeah, so she brought it in and she said, you know what, try that, what do you think? And I said, yeah, fill up two trolleys, dear, right? You know the way. So that's definitely a bargain, but nobody's to go to the Green Hills Road one because <laughs> we want to go there and we want to buy the rest of the stuff. And the other thing that she picked up, um, kind of like a cord or a heavy twine. Now, a thinner version of this, would this was only 2 99 2 99 as well, okay. yeah. So there's like two rolls of it in it, right? So for two ninety nine. Now that was the only size they had in the Green Hills Road uh, little. But if they did have a thinner version, it'd be brilliant for decorating buttonholes. You know the little stems on the buttonholes. But this one would also do for covering the handle of a wedding bouquet. And again, for decorating or using a glue kind of around a pot, you know, like to give a decoration on it. Or even the likes of anybody. Yesterday we were talking about milk bottles and jam jars and pasta, pasta uh, jars filled with the Sweet William. And again, I think to decorate them using some glue and gluing the twine. And you get the glue guns in Lidl and Aldi as well. So that's exceptionally good value as well. It doesn't say how many yards are on these ones. I'm as blind as a bat, so I can't read it. Oh, two by approximately 15 meters. So, so 30 meters. meters. Right, okay. So 30 meters in the two of them kind of put together. So that's exceptionally good value. And the third thing, actually she bought four things. So the third thing, this was also 2 dollars Yeah. So this is like our, we call it raffia, you know that way. And it's kind of like straw. And it does for making bows, or, but again, it's also great for like. Candy we might candy. do a wreath maybe next week and show you doing the raffia on the wreath and, I and use, the yeah. I use all the hessian. Yeah, I use, yeah. I use the whole lot. Yeah. So don't so, when you open that, it goes everywhere. It, yeah, it's going to go all over the place. So she's warning me now not to open it. But I will show you how to use this next week, and it's great for making bows. But again, also for you know the floral boxes or the porter boxes that you send out your bouquets in, just to tie the twine around that and then knot, even without any kind of bow or such, it can be lovely. Or again, on a bridal that a bridal bouquet that's maybe looking for that kind of more 
Bohemian rustic sort Eimer of stuff. saying are all these from Little. Yes, I got them in Little on the Green Hills Road. Last night. Last night. Yeah, okay. last night. I was doing my shopping. Yeah. yeah. So it's obviously in the Thursday specials, you know, yeah. in the catalogue. And right? actually, and they had no vegetables. Like, there was, <laughs> there was no vegetables in the place. It was okay. empty. Oh. But, but uh, did you buy sweets and chocolate? I <laughs> bought a few sweets, all right. Yeah, oh. as you do. And the other thing that you got, and this has been for anybody that maybe is, you know, starting to go live on their Instagram, is a little selfie ring light. You know that way? So this is brilliant. Um, these were 14 or 14 99 yeah. 14 99 Now, I have one of them already. I actually bought it over in Lanzarote. There's a little in Lanzarote as well. And I bought it over there. And I have it set up on the office table over in Lanzarote. So when I'm working over there or I'm going live, I have it. So it's brilliant. So I, without opening this, I know exactly what it looks like. It that has like a little connection and it fits into the side of your laptop. And the light itself has three different, like, you know, a white light, a yellow light, warm a light, color, a warm yeah, light, yeah, and kind of like you know, there's three different versions on it. And again, your mobile phone kind of straps into the center of the of the, and you can turn that bracket that your phone can either be on its side or it can be portrait or on the horizontal. So I think they are they are a bargain because I tell you, I have one, and as I said, I leave it over there. And dear, it just kind of thinks she thinks my skin is getting a bit old looking, and I need a bit of light on my face. <laughs> so she said, you know what? I picked up one of them for here in the classroom. You know that way. Just an extra bit of light on the subject. So anybody that's maybe starting off their own business or maybe that has their own business. And, you know, we're always encouraging you about going live on your Instagram and your Facebook pages. And again, just a reminder to our students. Um, next week, we have Denise inspired, haven't we? Is she yes. on the beginners or the advanced? She's on the advanced next right. week, yeah. So next Tuesday, and I'll get her to go into the Bloom studio as well, and maybe some of the module fours. So we have Denise inspired, you know, that way she joins us. She does a beginner's class as well, and I'll have her in my module one. And um, again, she always explains about using the ring light and like explaining to your students how they can go live, you know, that way, and encouraging them to go live. So that's a few uh, little specials, um, <laughs> not sponsored, no. not any commission, do you know that way? We just talk. And we about, see a bargain, we, we like to share it. We like to share a bargain, exactly. Um. We have lots of likes over on TikTok. So, and again, it's insane. TikTok is saying to me, encourage your viewers to share your live and invite more friends. So, there go. so all the TikTok uh, watchers, Kai in Mauritius, etc. Why don't you click share and then why don't you encourage or invite any of your friends, you know, to follow us here on Facebook. And somebody is asking a question, are the flares natural, they're asking. Yes, yeah, so what's in front of me there? So when Deirdre was up in Lidl, Jesus, it's like a little sponsorship here <laughs> today. She picked me up a bunch of stock. Now, they are fairly blown, you know, that sort of way. The but smell of them. The smell of them is absolutely amazing. And she picked up a bunch of tulips. So much for they, Deirdre, can you remember? I can't remember, now, to be honest. Probably yeah. two ninety nine. Two ninety nine, probably, you know, yeah. Normally yeah. everything in Lidl is two ninety nine. dollars <laughs> I'm only messing. And again, I'm going to use our fabulous Sweet William. Do you know the way that I've been using here all week? So you can see, like, it's absolutely great. It's in fantastic condition. Do you know that way? And again, this is all um, from Tuesday's delivery. And I you know, obviously treat it and condition on Tuesday. I've been changing the water every day. So again, anybody that has maybe missed us on Wednesday or missed our, our live class on Thursday, go back and have a listen to them and uh, make sure to like and share them. But also I gave lots of tips kind of about the Sweet William. Now there is a kind of a more burgundy wine color in the Sweet William, but I purposely left them shades out because I just thought these shades were kind of warmer and they would work with the colors that Deirdre had picked up. Uh, Yvonne says three ninety nine. She got some in Little yesterday. Perfect. You got so, a bargain here. Yeah. And she said, you know what? Well, see, you can't buy any vegetables in here because we're obviously out of it. So just throw all that stuff into the trolley. And we can eat the sweet William. <laughs> and the sweet William. You can eat the sweet William. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yesterday. So yesterday I showed you two different style baskets and I decided to do the smaller basket, you know the way. And I just showed you that shape basket and I said, you know what I mean, if anybody wanted and a lot of you, you know that way you must be glutton for punishment you sir you just wanted me to come back on again and to demonstrate this basket here so what i've done is that was a full block of foam and i could say like the end piece off and what i've done is just kind of i just moved my turntable over here is i just kind of created like a wedgie you know that way like wedgie block to see on the inside 
of the basket and then that just helps to kind of bring the floral foam up that extra bit higher. Now normally when I'm using larger blocks of floral foam, I am inclined to kind of trim the corners, you know that way, and trim the edges off. Now it's not necessary to do that, but I just kind of find it's easier with the shape, you know that way, and when you're trying to kind of camouflage it in with greenery, I find that you cut all, all them little sharp corners and you can do what I'm doing, just letting them fall down into the basket. Now the basket itself is plastic lined, so it holds water. So what I'd recommend you to do is when the arrangement is finished, fill up your bottle of water, pour it on top of the floral foam. A lot of people are inclined to work around the edges, you know, or the sides, you know the way, which is the easy way. But the thing is, the flowers are drinking the water from the floral foam from the top. So you're better off, that's the part that's going to dry first. And obviously with gravity, you know that way, the water is going to sink down. So make sure that you pour the water on top of the floral foam slowly. Don't pour it on real fast. Pour it on real slow, that the floral foam is absorbing most of the water and then the surplus water is going down into the end of the basket. And I'd normally say have about two, three centimetres of water in the end of your containers as much as possible. You obviously with a basket don't want to make it too heavy, but um, say like if it was a ceramic container or a heavier container, I would probably fill the container up with as much water as possible. You would always say like how much, and I'd say like it starts to pee over the top, you know that way, and then you know you have enough in. You can't over water floral foam, do you know that way? And the way it actually works is the flowers, when you cut a flower, or when I go and cut the foliage, so as you cut an item, and immediately, we call it shock, but it starts to suck. So if I was to say, take up that piece of silver Sussex, and I cut the end of it, actually hearing it or knowing it, that piece of silver Sussex says, oh, you know that way, it's actually sucked in, you know that way. And what it's going to do is when I place it into the floral foam, it will suck up the water out of the floral foam, you know. And in the first hour or so after a flower arrangement has been made, the floral foam will dry out the most because that's when the most water is drank. Because if you cut up 30 pieces of foliage or 30 pieces of flower, well, that 60 pieces all <gasps> sucking like mad, you know, the way out of the floral foam, it'll dry very fast. So again, by putting the extra water in the end of your container, the floral foam is like a natural sponge and it'll naturally keep absorbing up the water. But if you haven't left them a couple of centimetres extra of water in the end of the container, there's nothing for the floral foam to suck up. And believe it or not, it hasn't got a brain, okay? So it doesn't it say like, oh shit, stop, your one forgot to top us up, you know, that we stop sucking. So what happens is the floral foam keeps trying to absorb and keeps trying to suck up the water, which isn't actually there. And then what happens is it actually starts to suck the moisture down from the stems because it's like a magnet, it's sucking and drawing the whole time. But because there's no water there for it to take up, it actually sucks the water or the moisture out of your stems. And then you kind of wonder, why did all the flowers die? You know that way. And when you take out the dead flowers or the dead stems, you'll see the end of the stem looks like somebody's after having a little chew on it. You know when you're... Um, well, I drink gin and tonic when I'm in the pub night time and I love to use a straw. Even if I'm at home in the house, I prefer to use a straw. Nowadays, it's all the paper straws. Now, I don't know if it's just me, a bad habit or whatever, or are you inclined to do this as well? I chew the paper straw and suddenly I can't drink my gin up through the straw anymore because it's all, you know, after collapsing. But, you know, it'd be like I was after chewing the straw. You could see my teeth mark on it. And that's what happens to the end of the silver sauce. I'll show you. Um, <laughs> basically, it's like the moisture has been sucked out of the stem. And when you look at the stem, you'll think, God, you're next after chewing the end of the stem of the silver Sussex. And that's why your, your material, your flowers, or your foliage has died. Anybody has any questions, post them in the comments. And remember, we're looking for you to click share. And in case you're wondering what the weather is like, in Dublin, it looks like it's just going to piss rain. And it seems to be minutes. raining all over, oh my God, yeah. it actually, it's it's just raining got, all over the country too. I'm look, the window was behind Deirdre here. And as I look out the window there, it's just getting dark. The black clouds are coming over and we're just waiting on it to literally thunder down. Do you know that way? So if you have washing out on the line, Win and wreck, get it in. There, run out and get your washing. Now, to strap your oasis in, and I did show this yesterday, but a lot of people were asking questions about it. So they were asking about what gauge wires am I using? I'm using 20 gauge, okay? And I'm actually putting two 20 gauge side by side. And two 20 gauge placed side by side is actually a 19 gauge wire. And some of you might say, well, would you not just have used a 19 gauge wire? A 19 gauge wire isn't a popular wire in flare shops. Most flare shops wouldn't have them in stock. But believe it or not, even though that is now, I'll explain about the taping in a minute, even though 
have is the same thickness as a 19 gauge wire. It's a lot more flexible. Do you see the way I ended there? If that was a proper single 19 gauge wire, when you would go to do that, it would actually just bend on an angle. Do you know the way? It's not flexible. So that's why a lot of flare shops just use 22s and 20 gauges. And just for anybody that's on metric, is Sinead watching, is she? Um, I'm not sure. I do have a little chart, you know that way, of all the different gauge wires. And again, in Imperial and metric, just my age, I still am inclined to use the metrics, the, or sorry, the Imperial, the old method, the old fashioned method, and call them a 20 gauge wire. Well, it seems to be raining everywhere. It's raining in Drogheda, it's raining in Wicklow, it's raining in Birmingham, it's raining in Fermanagh, <laughs> it's raining in Essex, but it's lovely and sunny in Newfoundland. And probably over in Mauritius, I'd say. I'd say Mauritius is lovely over there, there too, well, yeah. Jealous we are. So it's what we call a shite day. It's an absolute shite Friday. Weather is shite all over the country. But it's so Friday. It's Friday. And the pubs will be open tonight. And there's no work tomorrow, so we can all go out tonight. It's raining in Monaghan as well. <laughs> so what I'm using is this gutter tape. Now, when you go to buy gutter tape, uh, we prefer to use the one called... Stemtex. Stemtex. I did a bit of a blank there for a second. Stemtex, spelled S-T-E-M-T-E-X. Because there is different companies to make it, and there's different kind of versions of it. And some of it is plastic. And I personally don't like the plastic one. Now, the plastic is the old-fashioned. And even though I said there, I am in old-fashioned. But believe it or not, I actually prefer this, this kind of version, which is more like a crepe paper. And the way it works is the more you stretch it, the stickier it gets. There's no back and front, so it's double-sided, so you can, whatever you're right-handed or left-handed. And if you're right-handed, I am, hold the wire in your right hand, hold the tape in your left hand. Obviously, swap that around if you're left-handed. I always then place the tape on an angle at the top of the wire. As I said, it's not sticky, but the heat of your hand and the stretch, it makes it sticky. So whichever happens to be your strong hand, place that on top. So I'm right-handed. This could be backwards when you're watching it Instagram, by the way. So my strong hand goes on top, my weak hand goes underneath. My strong hand does the rolling, the weak hand does the pulling. Roll and pull, roll and pull, roll and pull. And if you notice, you see the way the top hand has continuously kept moving down the wire. So as this one kind of ran away with it, pulling the tape, the other one chased it and rolled it up and chased it down the wire. And this one, it was like it was trying to run away again. It stretched and it ran away. And the other hand then chased it, rolled the wire and came down. And when you get to the end, you break the tape, okay? You don't take up your scissors to break it. Because your hands are warm, can you see the way the tape has actually stuck to my finger? So now when I go to start the next one, it actually makes it easier. So the first few are always the hardest because your hand is not warm and you have and built up the stickiness on it so because the tape is now sticky because you can see it's stuck to my hand it's easier now to start the next one Eileen Morgan Freeman says she accidentally bought some of the plastic ones and she says it's horrible it's to use horrible it is it's absolutely horrible and what happens as well Eileen is it unravels at the bottom so when you're using it for wedding buttonholes it's like a little flag coming out of the bottom now you know what I mean they used it for years and people probably watching here and say "Good, I use it all the time I don't have any problem and they probably find the one I use really thick because the plastic one is much thinner you know that way but you can actually buy gutter tape that i'm using in half the thickness that i'm using now i never buy it i prefer to use the thicker one and also i've seen people or other floristry tutors and they suggest cutting that in half now listen i need to be off my wall on tablets at this stage to try and cut that in half i wouldn't be bothered to me and everybody has their own way of doing things my secret is stretch it roll and pull you know that way so stretch it roll and move down, stretch, roll, move down, stretch, roll, move down. And when you get to the very end, break off your tape. So basically, I've done four wires there for a reason, okay? And the four of them now are, are, are good to tapes together. And in floristry, we call them making support wires. And when I have our students and I'm teaching them how to do the go to tape, and I always say, like, practice loads of them, stand them in a container. You will use them at some stage. They won't go to waste. But where I'm going to use them today is for wiring the oasis into the baskets. Now, I know some of you might say, God, do you use anchor tape? Anchor tape doesn't stick to baskets. It keeps kind of coming off. And it ends up then that you have to kind of go around your basket and it's untidy and messy looking. And other people use a strip of florist ribbon 
But what you have to try and do is get this piece strip of florist ribbon in through the hole of the basket. Now this basket, by the way, has fairly decent holes in it, like gaps in the, in the wicker of it. So I probably would get it through. But the basket I had yesterday was a different story altogether. And again, you'd want to be on tablets to try and get the ribbon in through the little hole, where the wire is just so easy. Now the wire I have is not long enough. Do you remember I showed you this yesterday? If you didn't watch yesterday's go back, you can always watch it on the replay. So what I did was I crisscrossed them like an X and I twisted them together. So basically it's like a piece of barbed wire. You know the way barbed wire has even the raw bits sticking out like that. But if you want to, you can just roll them in until they're all kind of cut. And that's just to give a little bit of strength. Now, if I was on a bridal class with the students, I'd probably tell them to go to tape these together, as in overlap them, get your go to tape and tape them together, you know the way, and it's a neater and it's a tidier way of doing it. But when I go to use it for the basket today, I'll be pulling it and that may happen. So that's why I make the X, crisscross, and I twist them together because for what I'm using today, I just have the strength. And this is all just experience. And again, everybody has their own way of doing things. And I always say to the, you know, to students or people that are watching these lives here, because again, people come back and say, oh, I was told to do it that way. Whichever way works for you, that's the correct way. And when it comes to anybody that's in business, whichever is the fastest and you make the most money on, that's the right way. Do you understand? So sometimes the manual is not always the, it might be the correct way, but it might be the right way because you're not making any money on it and it's slowing you down, do you know? So how you're taught how to do things for an exam, it may not necessarily be how you actually do it physically when you're in a flower shop and you have to sweep and brush up your bum and you're trying to make a flower arrangement and make a cup of tea all at the same time. So again, you have to work with what's good for you. And often like when students come to us and they're brand new, I always say, or they've been dabbling or they've done a course or a night class or whatever, I just say, listen, put out your head everything you've been taught before. Bear with me, stick with me, you know what I mean? I won't put you wrong, but at the very end of the course, you might say, do you know what? The way Jeanette showed us how to do them wires was shite. This was an easier way. And then stick to that easy way. And the same thing, maybe with the bows, you might say, God, how I was taught to make the bows in the past was shite and the way Jeanette showed us was a better way and take the best of everything that you see because it's a bit like doctors, doctors differ and patients die and it's the same with the flowers, the flowers differ and your flowers might die. Uh, Jackie Neal says she's got a taping floral crowns here while she's while she's watching Brilliant. us in. Have you got a flower crown party coming up, Jackie? Have you? It's probably for communions or something oh, because we have communions yes. this yeah. weekend. Brilliant. Hester uh, McCann says the sky has just started to release the fine Irish rain that keeps our grass green. Are you in Dublin as well? Are you? I, I don't, well everywhere seems to have rain at the seems moment. To have it, yeah. yeah. So how you wire the oasis into the basket is again you get the end of the wire and always work on the side of the basket that's away from your belly. Okay? Okay, so fish the wire in through the little hole, as much or as little as you want, bend it back over and basically twist it around itself. Now it is quite stiff that wire, you know what I mean, but you can see there it's nice and secure. And I always then twist the arrangement around, you know that way, because then it's always easier to work to the opposite side. So again, look for a little hole, this is really easy this basket because there's plenty of holes. Fish it through there and again what I did is I kind of squeezed the basket kind of in my chest just to make it a little bit smaller. I wrap that around, I just want to cut a little bit off because it's too much. And then I wrap that wire then around itself, basically. And when I release my chest, you know that way, it just means that the oasis, the wire is crossed that nice and tight, you know what I mean? And in case any gobshite turns it upside down, the flower won't, won't fall out. Now, if you had a busy period coming up, you could have all that done in advance because that takes a lot of time. And even like Jackie there at home, go to taping the wires, you know what I mean? You'd have loads and loads of wires taped. And to be honest, when you get good at the taping, you'll probably find that 120 gauge on its own is enough. I always teach the students doing two together at the very beginning. And then as they get experience and they're well able to do it, I start them off on the single wire. But when you're only learning how to do this, you know that way. And again, you know yourself, have you done it before? Have you never done it before? Um, you, would be, you might be able to do it on a single 20 gauge wire. Any questions, put them in the comments. And again, remember, we're looking for a couple of shares. Um, Eileen says, Jeanette, could you do a tutorial on some small, quick and easy arrangements to make to sell on a stall, please? I'm for the Jubilee. I'm raising funds to take the children from church to the seaside in September. Hi. 
September. Oh, that's lovely. Um, do you like see the cupcakes and the va the Do you remember cocktails? last week I done the arrangements in the cellophane and the tissue yes. paper? Yeah. But they were so inexpensive. And you know, we were only saying um, here because we still have, like we bought in all the Sweet Williams and I've loads of it. And Deirdre said, why don't you do another tutorial um, using the cellophane? I wonder, did you miss that class or did you see that class? Now again, the colours, like you could go, I presume it's red, white and blue. I presume. I presume. So. Sorry. We're but it could be here. platinum. Isn't it platinum jubilee? So Have platinum is silver, so it could be grey. I don't know. I don't know. Let us know. But I'm going to say that maybe it's blue, white and red. So you could get the tissue papers in them three colours. You could use the clear cellophane. So you'd have your three colours coming up. And again, you could pick flowers, you know, that way. And even like blue flowers can be awkward to get. I know you can get the original or, you know, the... Uh, thistle kind of are you could get delphiniums and um, expensive though yeah so again you could keep it to like say red and white flowers and red flowers in the summer are always cheaper than other colored flowers and the reason why is nobody wants red flowers now maybe the week of the jubilee because there would be a demand for red flowers it'll create a shortage and holland says fuck them english let's put the price up on them maybe don't say that but that you know what i mean that more or less is what happens the more demand... but you know the red and white flowers and then just do the paper in the blue would yeah, be the would three be colours, well. yeah. Yes, yeah, so you could just do the blue and white tissue paper and your cellophane, and then, as Deirdre said, you could just go for the the red flares. Yeah, she said she was thinking about those arrangements. I just think they're so easy. They look very impressive. They're not expensive. And have you watched the other tutorials where we did the little cupcakes? You know what I mean? Maybe we could do them again one of the days, or maybe you have a video, Deirdre. You could maybe post it up. For yeah. Them. And um, where they're like little plastic dishes that you, we over here in Ireland, we buy them in a shop called Deals. And then they're like a little dish to give a child ice cream in. Like, I think they were called an ice cream sundae dish because they come with a little plastic spoon as well. So they're just a little plastic um, case, basically. And you put a couple of scoops of ice cream in. You put that you want into it, by the way. And I have a little class demonstration, you know, where we put floral foam into it and then we fill it with flowers. And I make them like a cupcake, so you know, like I'm just going to use as a color, like say white, um, white base flowers, you know, what I mean, as white icing, and then a cherry on top, you know, what I mean, so you could have your red. And what you could do, they do come in different colors, the plastic spray them containers, blue. is spray them blue. So you'd have a blue bowl, you'd have white icing, white flowers, and you'd have a red rose or red carnation as your red cherry on top. So I'll try and route out that video for you and we'll maybe post it um, on the page. I can't remember what her name is again. Um, Eileen, Eileen I Morgan Freeman. Oh, it's our Eileen. Yeah, our Eileen. Our Eileen. Caroline over on Instagram was saying, Jeanette, could you make, do tutorials on making corsages? Now you'd find that sort of work is we do that actually on the programs because it's up close and personal. And to be honest, me doing a corsage here, you'd actually never see the detail. I need the camera on my shoulder, right? So where in the online programs, we have all that kind of done because Deirdre is videoing it up close from this angle and from that angle from from the other angle. And I keep repeating it and turn it upside down that the students get to see it. So I think it would be a waste of the class. It's not that I wouldn't do it. I just think it would be an absolute waste because you wouldn't be able to do it. And I think on our detail. module three, we have about 15 or 16 corsages yeah, covered. Yeah, loads of them, corsages and buttonholes. So that is all actually covered on the module three. Now, what I'm doing here is I had a bit of greenery cut up. And yesterday I showed you different bunches of greenery that we bought in from Wicklow Foliage Farm, obviously based here in Ireland. But you also have Irish Green Guys and they're down in Kerry. So anybody maybe that's down there. Or otherwise, if you're just looking for a small amount, go out to your local gar your local flower shop and they'll sell you a couple of branches of greenery. No problem at all. Or go out to your garden. So what I'm using is a little bit of the Silver Sussex, you know that way, which I absolutely love. And watch yesterday's video to see what the bunches look like. A little bit of the bottle brush, and we won't even ask for the proper name, but somebody might put it up there. We had it yesterday. And a little bit of the pittosporum. Now, the pittosporum, I did explain yesterday, has a lot of new growth on it. You know that way, I want it a little bit shorter than that. So it is kind of quite soft, you know that way. So it wouldn't be your best lasting foliage kind of at the moment. And I see the Irish Green guys yesterday was showing where they're going to start to harvest their pittosporum next week. The, yeah, the eucalyptus or the pittosporum? No, the pittosporum. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. So, Stuart, the Wicklow one is obviously a little bit ahead yeah. um, of the Kerry one. Um, so basically what I'm doing here is I went a little bit of greenery around the outside and then I had like one kind of standing up in the centre and you can see from there on then I'm just pasting greenery in on a slant. So not like doing this like a normal formal class, you know that way. Obviously on our online commercial programmes we do things a little bit more formal. But I kind of try with these classes, you know what I mean? 
like in case anybody thinks these are the only things I can do, I can do things a little bit harder and a little bit more intriguing. But also we're restricted here with time, we're restricted here with cameras and the amount of detail and it's not like we're given notes and step-by-step -step instructions and cost prices and so on. So I try to keep all these displays as simple as possible, do you know, that way to make it easy for the person that's just going to the local flower shop, buying a couple of flowers, doing it for pleasure, you know. And the thing about baskets is everybody has baskets in garage or shed and every old auntie you had has been collecting baskets over the last 50 years. You know that way when she dies our garage is full of baskets and elastic bands and all them sort of things. You know that way? So I kind of find people have baskets and the likes of deals and that sell baskets, you know, kind of cheap enough. And a lot of the charity shops sell baskets. So you could pick up like a couple of items around there yourself, you know the way, and then go to your local florist and buy your Sweet William or your stock or your tulips that I'm going to use today. And again, for anybody that's missed us for the last few days, is Ballymad Farm. Somebody tagged them there for me. Ballymad Farm in County Meath. You can actually go there and you can buy your own Sweet William. And um, if you're buying it wholesale for anybody that's in a flare shop, they'll actually send it to you by courier. Ring them up, go onto their page, message them, and they'll email you all the details, like what day you have to... And um, order it to get a certain day delivery. It's a great lasting flower. Now, when it comes in the cardboard box, it's wrapped in newspaper, County Mead, the Mead Chronicle, and <laughs> <laughs> um, just basically condition and treat it. And again, anybody that hasn't yet took and um, availed of the free online program that we have, I know yesterday I said just write in the comments, give us the link, give us the link. You know, so if anybody hasn't yet, because that's only free for a certain amount of time and then you have to pay for it. So anybody that wants to avail of it, it's completely free. You have access to it for six months. And it's an online program that you can literally pop in and pop out. And there's over 50 different varieties of fresh flowers and foliage, how to treat and condition them. And a full tutorial on the Sweet William is included in it. So if you haven't got that link, just write in the comments there. Give us the link text me the link, write me the link, whatever you want to write, write something about link anyway, and I'll respond to all the comments later on. Now, if I, if you did put up yesterday, I have responded to everybody. Okay, just and just I for those it. that are on Instagram, there's a few people on Instagram, they're looking for the link. We can't see the comments after the live, but if you, on Instagram, if you go to the bio, the link is in the bio. So you just have to, later on, is click into the link and, um, you can you can get it there and the worst comes messages and yeah then we, we just we'll send it to you yeah absolutely okay so that's what we're looking like so far there with the foliage and the turntable table that i'm using that's from a m floral sundry somebody might tag them there for me you know that way and she has some for sale and she'll post them to you now if you have a lower this is a higher table this is more like an island in the kitchen this workstation if you have a lower table the higher turntable is probably better you know that way but for anybody that's using their island in the kitchen or like me have a workstation you know kind of built to their height you probably find that the lower one it'll probably suit you so i'm going to start off with a couple of the stocks first you know that way so i am going to come up because i have no choice um though I, no i don't think i'm going to come up i was, I was going to say i'm going to come up high with with my center one but i'm actually not going to i'm going to keep it kind of low down i'll use something else in the center i'm changing all at once now what are the purple flowers called Jesus. Is it I'm stock? Is it this one you're talking about? So these are called stock. The scent is amazing. You'll find like all your little flare shops are all selling bed and plants at the moment. So if you buy the bed and plants and buy stock, and you can get ones that are called night scented stock, and like literally once it starts to get, you know, Dusky, the sun goes yeah. down. Oh my god, the smell in the garden is just amazing. These were bought in little last night when Deirdre was getting all the other bargains. They are quite mature, quite open, do you know that way? But again, just for demonstration, it was just to demonstrate them. Now, I was listening to Sue Well. Now, talk about, I'm always saying to you, you're always learning something new. And like where she was explaining to her students this morning that they're part of the cabbage family, you know, like the brassica, the cabbage flowers, and where they pollute the water very fast. So again, if you have stock in the vase, change the water every day. Or again, if you're using stock mixed in with other flowers in the vase, like a vase of water, you will find that the water will go off pretty fast, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put three of them in on an angle, you know, that way, so kind of like flowing out like that. Again, it's kind of more of a kind of a wild kind of garden kind of effect arrangement. Um, then, Finest Flowers Ireland says that she has grown stock from seed this year. It's her first time ever. Okay, so let us know how you're getting on and are you selling it? If you are selling it, why don't you put up your little links there, whatever? 
And um, again, after they've went to Ballymad Farm to get their sweet William, they can pop down to you and they can get their stock. And Celine has brilliant. just over on Facebook, she's just posted the link to the free course. If I you're on Facebook. Was, oh no, she's busy. She's, oh, she's, she busy. she's busy. She's, she's tagging away here for us. Thanks a million, Celine. And again, on TikTok, we'd love if you shared this video and invited people to join us. Um, we've got a few people watching at the moment. Fair play to you. But and again, we'd really appreciate, you know, that way, if you happen to And even on Facebook, give it a share. Yeah, if you happen to be in, like, any other florist groups or whatever, it's just to share with our, like, flower arranging clubs, our gardening clubs, you know, that way. So you can see there, just started off with three stocks on an angle, three Sweet Williams kind of in between them, and then I have one Sweet William kind of standing up in the centre. And obviously, with the shape of the stock, it is just going to be wild and wonderful kind of sticking out there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of the Sweet William kind of around the outside of the arrangement. So I'm just going to randomly cut a few of them here. And again, don't worry, you know, that way, if some are a little bit longer or some are a little bit shorter. Now, do you know what I noticed with the bunches of Sweet William? Like, when we were buying them, we were told there's 10 stems in a bunch. Okay, and another few flowers have said this to me as well. Some of the bunches had 12 and 15 stems in them. Now, so either your one in Valley Mad Farm can count, she's going to kick. <laughs> 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 or they're being very generous they are you know the way so you actually get more than 10 stems in the bunch and it wasn't just my bunch because i thought maybe maybe she's just being nice to us but um other flowers were saying the same so it's probably to balance up with where some of the flowers are a little bit smaller and some of the flowers are you know just that little bit larger so what i'm going to do now is kind of go around the end part of the arrangement you see like down around the end of the basket and just sticking in a couple of these flowers now yesterday i did explain to you that when you're sticking in these flowers if you hold your hand on top and i'll kind of like work over this way so you can see it it's also easier to work towards your stomach but if you um like hold your hand on top when you insert the flower you will get the flower to rest down to see on the basket so again hold your hand on top rest it on the basket and then you can stick it in a bad habit people have when they're starting off just looking for ones that are cut is they're inclined to hold the stems wrong as if they hold the flower underneath like that so then when they go to stick the flare in, unless you were a contortionist, it's impossible, you see, to make the flare hang down. Where if you actually hold it with your hand on top of it, you can see the way you're able to rest the flare down on the edge of the basket or the container. Now, I would never work over myself like I've just done there. That was just so that you could actually see what I was doing. So hopefully that made sense. And these are all just like little tips and little tricks that you'll pick up as you go along. Another thing that I was saying to the students yesterday was, with the Sweet William, because again, they're part of the carnation or the dianthus family is there's nodules coming up the stem so they're like these little knots are kind of here and there like probably two centimeters apart and when you're cutting these stems if you cut directly under one of the knots or the nodules you'll make a really big hole going into the floral foam and then what happens is the stems in kind to be a little bit loose or kind of like moving around so it is important that you either cut in between a nodule or cut the nodule off like you know what i mean cut directly above the nodule and linda says when you cut the flowers do you cut them on a straight or on an angle i'm inclined to cut everything on an angle there's the odd flower like germanese now i cut them straight and that's more because they have a hollow stem so when you cut a stem angled 45 degree angle it's like a ballerina on its tippy toes okay and what will happen is the toes will slide down into the floral foam like the point where when you cut straight across what happens is they shove down into the floral foam. Now, with Germany, they're a hollow flare, or um, what's the one I'm thinking of with the big tick stem? Oh, amaryllis. Amaryllis would be kind of the same. Now, amaryllis are difficult to get into floral foam, by the way. But when they have a hollow stem, you're probably better off cutting straight across. Because when you cut on the 45 degree angle, the point is too skinny and it'll just break when you go to insert it into the floral foam. So, hopefully, that makes a little bit of sense. So what I'm now going to do is just kind of go around and just add a few flowers kind of on an angle coming out of the basket. And again, we're kind of making this more country style kind of wild look. And you know that way, I know I've done like a lot of kind of formal styles with you, but just kind of to make something a little bit different. And again, yesterday in the tutorial, I explained about cop on spots and flim, 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 you know that way, and showed you a couple of little tips, you know. So, so far, you can see just the sweet William and the three stems of stock, and that's what it's looking like so far. And obviously, this is going to be an all-round arrangement, so it's going to be viewed from all sides. So again, it's important if you have the turntable to keep turning it around. 
Now, if the bunch that Deirdre had bought in Lidl yesterday had had six stock in it, but they're normally sold in fives or tens, you know what I mean? I would have loved to have three more that I could bring one in there, one in there, as one in between each of the ones that I have. I'll show you what I mean, but there's only two left, you see, so it's going to be unbalanced on one side. So I can put them in and we'll just ignore the unbalanced side, True. just to explain them. So if you were to focus on the two stocks, okay, and then went in between them, but went down much, much lower, can you see the way that will work out proportion-wise for you? Now, when I turn the arrangement around, and again, I'm working over myself so you can see this. So if I was to pick them two stocks there, and again, I was to cut the other one, and again, I was to work in between them, but just down that little bit lower. Do you see working down lower in the arrangement? Can you see the way it'll balance? But the bunch only had five, so I'm fecked for this corner, right? I'll have to keep this side of the basket facing my chest. But you see the way if I had another one, I could go in between them two down that little bit lower as well. But unfortunately, we hadn't, you know that way? So if that ever happens, you just make sure that the good side of the arrangement is facing out. Now again, she had a couple of the tulips. Now remember, tulips are going to continuously grow. And again, if you have that tutorial that I've told you that you can get for free, so it's a tutorial that you will have an online program, access to it for six months, and to cover over 50 different varieties of flowers and foliage. And all you have to say in the comments is, give us the link, and we'll, put, we'll post it underneath you later on. And there's a full tutorial on purchasing tulips and what to look for when you're purchasing tulips and how you know tulips are brand new, which these aren't. These are out a little. Now, it's nothing to do with little. Do you know that way? But it was dear to just got them last night. But I just thought, like, we had the Sweet William and it was just because a few of you were saying that you'd love to see the bigger basket and you seem to like that kind of country style. And I said, see if you got that, and I says that would work with the Sweet William because we weren't getting a flare delivery this week. So that's how... Um, I said that we were kind of picking up supermarket flowers. Sometimes people give out to us and say, oh God, you shouldn't be using supermarket flowers. At the end of the day, and like the florist suppliers will tell you this, even though florist flower shops might disagree with me here. If we didn't have the supermarkets importing the flowers from the growers and the wholesalers in Holland, flower prices would be off the wall completely here in Ireland. But because the likes of, I'm going to say Lidl and Aldi and Tesco and Dunn's and Marks and Spencer's and so on and so forth, okay? Because they're buying in so many flowers, these trucks are coming from Holland, across to England, across the UK, all the way to Ireland, okay? And our flower boxes are in the same trucks, believe it or not. You know, that sort of way. And that's what keeps the transport costs down. So people can give out about the supermarkets, but it is something to keep in mind. If we didn't have the supermarkets buying in the flowers, you just probably wouldn't be able to afford to buy them. Do you know the way or the flower shops wouldn't be able to get them in? Now again, you can see there, I just have been randomly turning the basket, adding in the tulips, and remember them tulips will continue to grow. And again, if you watch the tutorial on tulips, it'll all be explained, because there's a lot to cover. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my sweet William. And again, at this stage, it's a little bit of fill in, fill in, fill in. Again, if you have any questions, post them in the comments. If we miss the questions, you know, sometimes Deirdre's a bit silly and she misses the question, I respond back to everybody later on this evening. And again, um, if you want the link for the free course, just write, give us, give us the link in the comments or write something with the word link in and we know what you're talking about and we'll definitely organise that for and you. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, I will have added to the description of the video the, the free link so you can go up there to get the link as well. If you're watching on Instagram, the link is in the bio. If you're watching on TikTok, drop me a DM or a PM and I will send you the link. And Celine is doing a whopper job over on Facebook, posting the link. Very and nice. we will go back and reply to any of the comments as well to um, to give you the link. And again, a little reminder, what's the chances of click and share? Do you know the way I'm sharing our video? And if you're in a flower group or a flower club or anything like that, please do um, share the link into the flower clubs for us. And um, the other thing as well, what I'd maybe remind you is, is Chelsea is starting next week. Yep. And Sue Whale, some flower Sue, is going to be in Chelsea. And we were talking to her this morning and she's going to be documenting the whole thing of uh, Chelsea. She's in the journalists. And, and it's amazing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Chelsea is just amazing. Like, the floristry competitions. And, like, even on our, over on her page, like, she's been building it up and posting photographs from the previous years. You know that way? Just kind of like reminding people what um because there's some amazing flowers in Ireland who have actually won Chelsea. 
So Karen Massey over in Flirtatious. Yeah, Jenny. Mo, uh, Jenny down in Morris by Moira. Dunshockland, you know the way. Kira. Um, Kira, can't think the Quigley. Flower shop. Kira, um, Kira the Flower Boutique, is it? Can't remember the Flower Bowl. The, the Flower something, and yeah. she's in Wicklow. Um, so like lots of like flowers have won the awards, you know, that way. Um, and they're from Ireland, and obviously lots of UK students, florists have won it as well. But it is great when we see some of our own ones. Absolutely. So again, just for a little texture, I've been doing this the last few days. It's just adding a little few of the little dried flowers, kind of like in and out through it. Now the scent of this basket is just amazing. Between the stocks, even though we have our lopsided stock, you know that way. So the stocks and the Sweet William, the scent is amazing. Do you know that way? And again, like lots of different textures, lots of different shapes. You don't need to dry flowers. It's just because I have them. Do you know that way? And again, I've been using them. So yesterday, like we used the, the lavender and the Sweet William. And the day before, we used the roses and the Sweet William. And today, we've used the stock and the Sweet William and the tulip. So that's really kind of giving you a good kind of feel of what you can get out of Sweet William. And my next kind of plan is, is to do the Sweet William in the cellophane. You know, I did do that demonstration with you before, but just again, just a little reminder. And again, not everybody gets to watch all the videos, I understand. And I also want to do a hand tied, like, you know what I mean? I think they'll just be amazing. I think they'll be lovely, yeah. So I'm gonna try and get as much value out of my hundred stems, you know, that way of Sweet William. And again, just showing you, you know what I mean, like what you can actually do. And again, in the comments there, if there's something that you'd like me to demonstrate, I might not always be able to do it, you know, that way. But if we can help you, we we'll do I might our best. Be able to guide you and say, listen, this is where you, you will see that video. There's lots of lovely comments coming in. They actually lo uh, love it. I actually really like this one now. I love the wildness of this. Yeah. Um, I know Jeanette finds it beyond her grain to go wild sometimes. Yeah, I'm really tidy. I'm one of these, I iron me knickers and I fold them. No, I don't. But I'm not, I'm about that much away from doing it. You know, that sort of way. Like my presses and my wardrobe, even my, my husband's shorts, it's pinks and blues and he does wear pink shorts. You know, that way. Like I literally like. She's you know, OCD. Yeah, I am a bit OCD. And when it comes to the flare range, and, and often I think it's because I teach all the time, do you know the way, and I'm making the students, especially with formal displays, or when you're training them, you know that way, I'm inclined to be precise and exact. And when I try to go a bit wild myself, do you know that way, unless I have a few drinks on me, I'm a little bit lost, do you know that way. But the stock and the tulips will naturally make you go wild, yeah. because that's the type of flare that they are. It's very hard to do formal arrangements um, like, the kind of amount of people sharing is great thanks so much I really we really really appreciate yesterday, like when we you see when we come off we have a little chat about you you know that way and we said just they were a great group today didn't they share loads well yesterday we said weren't they a shy group like, look at the <laughs> shares there was hardly any shares on yesterday you know that way um Pauline says hi ladies can you please do something for a grave not a wreath many thanks but you know what, Paul, in something like that to go on a grave, I know you can't, but that is, it's fairly heavy, you know, that way, because there is a full block of flower foam, and if you can imagine that with water, do you know, that way, and again, if you topped that up, I think that would be gorgeous, and yeah. like, I'm not going to Sligo this weekend, um, as you all know, well, mostly as you know, my husband's from Sligo, and my mother-in-law's buried in Sligo, but the Sligo sister-in-law's coming up to Dublin this weekend for a change with the kids and all, so we're all excited for that, we are. But if I was going to Sligo this weekend, I would definitely send that down and say to Tom to put it on his mum's grave. Like, you know, and even bouquets of flowers, like if they're in an aqua pack, you know, that way, or again, some graves we don't, but some graves would have like a vase, you know, built onto the grave. Like, it doesn't have to be a wreath. And like, sometimes I always think wreaths are kind of more like, the funeral, do you know that way? Where throughout the year, I would I would think something like that on a grave would be yeah. absolutely perfect. You know that way. I think it would be beautiful. There's no way it's going to blow away. You know what I mean? Because it's quite heavy. No. And again, the flowers are going to stay nice and fresh because it's going to take in all the rain and Sligo and all this pisses rain and Sligo. Um, but again, like if you top the basket up with water yourself, you know that way, it'll stay fresh for abs as long as the flowers are going And to then rest. you could just redo it again. You like could bring the basket home and you could redo it then in a week or two weeks' time. Do you know what I mean? So that would definitely work. But that would also do as a happy birthday, happy anniversary, get well soon. Do you know that way? Like any occasion. And it's just showing you how you can use a completely different style of basket to what I did yesterday, but also a different selection of flowers. 
Um, you can leave it at that. Yeah, absolutely. Juna says she shared it to her gardening group. Yeah, you have all been sharing really, really well yeah, today. Thanks so much. Remember, we have all the little bargains at the beginning. So anybody that didn't watch the very start of this, I showed all the bargains for two ninety nine that you can get from Little. We're not being paid from Little to do this, but you listen to the tag there, Celine, to Little <laughs> Ireland. <laughs> and I'm sure Aldi has them as well. And again, I showed you a, a ring light that you can, again you can buy in Little. And for anybody in the flare shops that's doing their own little, you know, videos of that, they're a great thing. I have one, you know that way, and it's brilliant. Paula says she loves, loves, loves this basket. She says she also uses baskets for um for my mum to put on her parents graves as well brilliant. yeah i think they're brilliant you know that way and, and everyone's love baskets you remember i said at the beginning every old auntie has a shed and a garage full of baskets because they've been collecting baskets for years and years and years but again you'll pick them up in charity shops deals again your local flower shop will sell them don't know about little but you maybe hint hint little <laughs> might get some baskets in well little have loads of plastic boxes my kids are telling me i have a fetish for plastic oh, boxes plastic at the boxes. moment and i got loads of them in little yesterday because um, we're getting the work done at home and I'm trying to put stuff into place. Is that kitchen and that building, not Little. that bedroom, not finished. Nearly, okay, we're nearly yeah. there. Okay, um, hope everybody has a fabulous weekend. Uh, Deirdre and, my, and myself and a few friends, we're heading to the gate tonight. We might do a little video. Yeah. Not that we need to go to this musical, but it's called Menopause the Musical. Now, we would know nothing about menopause. <laughs> oh, okay? not at all. Uh, we're just kind of going for a fact-finding mission, you know that way. <laughs> but listen, um, I hear it's supposed to be great crack great laugh everybody says you can relate to it but i know i won't be able to relate like, we would we don't even we can't spell men no no definitely but, not um, anyway that's what we're heading tonight half five the gaiety grafton street we're heading to the menopause the musical if anybody else is gone let us know and sure listen you can buy us a drink <laughs> <laughs> no we no without buying a drink and if you're looking out for us you'll see us in the bar yes uh, gin and tonic for both of us slimline tonic obviously and um, everybody else, have a fabulous weekend. And we will be back on next week. And I will do the other tutorials on the things that I promised you. So bye, good luck, have a fabulous day, bye-bye.